Hey, welcome to Bricks LA Builder Spotlight. I'm Aileen and I'm here with Anuradu Pearson. Hi. Hi. How's it good going? Good to be here. It's oh, good. thank Everything you so much. Good? Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, talk to us about your building and your, your passion for Lego and all things brick. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Well, let's jump in to uh, you're an adult fan of Lego. Uh, you're mm -hmm. a builder. You've been showing your creations for years. Uh, how did you get into building with Lego as an adult? As an adult, um, as a, let me go back uh, one step. So as a kid, I had one set, one Lego set, because Lego wasn't available. I grew up in India, and it wasn't available there. And that with that one set, I built for so many years and I built just about everything my imagination could think of. And I loved it. But then that went, that was gone. I grew up, whatever. I came to the US and I had a very sudden move. Like I wasn't expecting to move to the US. It was very sudden. Uh, and it was, I mean, un unexpected. And um, I wasn't happy about it. And I was trying to find like something that would ground me. I was, um, and of course I moved to Seattle and it's really gray, cold, rainy. I come from a really sunny, warm city, colorful. Our clothes are colorful. The food here was like, oh my God, I can't eat this. Please put some salt in the food here. So I come from there to here and try to adjust. I didn't want to come. So I was trying to find something that would ground me. And walking downtown, I suddenly saw a toy store and the window of the toy store had like all these tubs. You know, those days we used to get the red tubs and the blue tubs of creator uh, thing. And I saw that and I said, Lego, I loved Lego as a kid. So I ran into the store, bought a few boxes, not sets, just these boxes, came home, threw them all on the carpet and started building. And I was so happy. That was one of the happiest moments since I had moved here. And so I kept doing that. And uh, then I found BrickCon online. And I went to my first BrickCon. Uh, I think that was 2004. And I saw people build this amazing stuff. And I said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to switch my career. I was an accountant in India. And I was, I was so bored and so bored, like I want to kill myself working with numbers. and. So I said, these people are doing this. Some of them were doing it professionally also. So I said, I'm just going to do this. And that was the beginning. That's amazing. What th That's such a heartwarming story to like find this connection to your childhood, you know, that brought you so much joy again. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, so you, you know, randomly bought some Lego and you went to a convention and then you found, uh, I assume you found your local uh, Lego user group. So you, you met up some other adults yes. that built and what happened there? Like, how did you start actually building and showing your creations? So when I went to my first Lego group meeting, uh, I asked like, how, how would you do all those questions? And they said, just build something. And so I took this little house, a South Indian house and it was all bare, so I put a little water well in the back. I put a little flowering tree and uh, just some landscaping, and I took it there. And these are the same builders that I saw at BrickCon that had built amazing stuff. So they all ga they gathered around my little mock. That's when I learned what a mock is. And um, so having a real excited discussion, and I was like, wait, wait a minute, what's happening? This is a, like a small house with one tree and what's happening? So then they explained that the technique for this tree had never been done before. It was the first time. And so for me, this is the first time I'm showing my work beside uh, two other people. I have apparently done a used a technique that had never been done before. So the feedback was like excellent. And of course, like, as we all know, that Lego is mostly uh, white middle-aged men, a few white younger men. <laughs> I was fresh off the boat. I'm this small statured brown woman, room full of white men. I have a little bit of an accent, but I realized I'm speaking their language and I'm being accepted as an AFOL in their community. And they appreciate what I was doing. And so 
that was like, no, I, I can build box and I can, I can do this. I absolutely love that term speaking their language. It's the language of the brick. Yes. It's like the international language of love, but it's the international language of the brick. Yeah. And oh, when, when you, when you go to this community and you know how to speak in bricks and plates, it's, it opens a whole different world for you. Absolutely. That's amazing. What a great first experience at your, uh, your Lego club meeting. Yes, of course. Yes, uh, absolutely. So I love that because I have so many, you know, I love doing these interviews and talking to AFOLs and, and learning all this stuff because I hear so many positive remarks from people saying, you know, I just had such a great first time and I just wanted to keep coming back to this community. And that's part of what I wanted to do with some of these builder spotlights was highlight some of these wonderful positive things we have in our community because you know, we are a growing community of builders, but I think people don't know how great it is. You know? It is, it is. And everybody's so open, like to share most people, like there are, there are a few. Uh, people anomalies. are people. <laughs> yeah, people are people. Uh, but, you know, it's like open source. Everybody's so eager to share their techniques, their ideas. It's, it's wonderful. Absolutely. Um, which is wonderful because it's great to share them on, in person at conventions, great to share them online uh, with, you know, all the pictures we can share on Flickr and, and other yeah. sites like that. So it's really cool that there's so many ways to connect with other builders. I, I love that you brought that up. It's a, it's a really great aspect of our community. Uh, yeah. And I'm glad you had a good first time with that. So what, so you sh you've showed your, your so at this point, you've showed your, your first creation at a, a meeting, a Lego meeting, and then I believe you started bringing creations to uh, conventions. Yes. Uh, so I, I was interested in architecture mm -hmm. in the beginning. Uh, I actually wanted to be an architect uh, growing up, but oh. to go into architecture school in India, you need to know how to draw still life and stuff like that. I, I cannot draw a leaf. So I was disqualified. <laughs> so th this was my outlet for that as well. So uh, buildings, I, I had study pictures of architectural wonders around the world, or good architectural buildings and certain architects. And so I started building buildings. That was my first thing. And I think one of the first brick cons where I took my buildings, there was another guy who used to build um, buildings and for the city and uh, everything like that and he is an architect and he would win prizes at BrickCon for his buildings and the first time I took mine uh, I won that prize like best building in city and he goes and he became my best friend because he says damn you Anu <laughs> so I mean that was another feedback and um, that that was good also Oh, that's fantastic. And then slowly, yeah, slowly I went from buildings to uh, to landscaping and other stuff. That's what I was going to bring up was uh, you have these amazing, you know, through your, your catalog of work, you have these amazing buildings and beautiful architecture. And, and I, you know, now that makes a lot of sense with you thinking about being an architect at some point. So it's, it, what a great outlet uh, to share that, yeah. you know, without being an actual architect. Uh, hopefully that fulfill, scratched that itch for you a little bit. Yeah, it does. It definitely does. <laughs> So then at some point you kind of started building a little bit more landscape. Now I notice you build a lot of, it, you kind of incorporate both architecture and yeah. landscape into a lot of your models. Um, did you prefer one to the other? Do you just kind of get in the mood and you're like, oh yeah, I want to build, you know, landscape today. So you, you focus more on something like the Japanese garden or something like that. Or do you plan it all out ahead of time and think, okay, this much is dedicated to the landscape. This much is dedicated to the, the architecture of this model. No, it's, it's just organic. It mm -hmm. just, uh, it's something uh, that just happens. A small little idea will grow and I'll keep working on it in, in my brain. Like um, I had gone to a seaside place. I don't, I think Hawaii. And I saw these rocks, which were like arches of different shapes going into the sea. I was, it was so beautiful to look at, just plain rock. And I kept looking at that and said, I want to build that. I mean, there's things in the world I see in my brain just translates into Lego. So I was doing that and um, playing with things and just thinking of things. And then I thought of uh, quarter plates, you know, gray, dark gray quarter plates. 
and I started playing with that and putting putting them like at a one stud differential all over. And I came up with that same thing. Uh, and that was like one side of the mark. And I said, okay, this is done. I got what I wanted. And so, but there was this open bowl on the other side. And I said, what do I do with this? And so I said, oh, this could be a nice little village with, you know, people, um, little cottages all over. And so then that part became the architecture part where I played with ideas and techniques and, you know, built little houses. And that's the, I think my mark, that mark is called self-sustained village. Excellent. So it just, it just works that way. It's like the rice plantations was an idea. Mm -hmm. So I built that and then with the rice curves and then little cottages with uh, Japanese architecture. Absolutely. And so much great landscape. I mean, that one, so something like uh, that mock, did, did, I mean, did you plan that out ahead of time? Because that seems like something to me with the space, you know, with the, it looks so proportioned and prepared and, you know, planned out, but I don't know, maybe, maybe you just started building and it organically took those shapes. Like, does that make sense? It, it feels yeah, like, yeah. for me, I would, I feel like I would need to plan that out. So do you plan something like that out ahead of time? No, I just like wow. build in my head for a little bit. I may wow. sketch it out slightly, but it's just an organic thing that just happens. That is amazing. Thank that you. Is, that's really cool. You know, I mean, it's cool. You know, there's so many different ways of, of building, you know, just building organically. Like it's such a talent to have that, like you said, to be able to look at something, kind of translate it into Lego. And then of course there's other ways of building digital mocks first and then, you know, yeah. figuring out what yeah. you need and laying things out. So I, I love hearing how other people, you know, start their their builds and, and continue. So do you um, end up ever rebuilding your mocks or adding on to them or, you know, changing them in any way? Or do you finish it and you think, okay, that's done. I'm good with that. Uh, no, a mock is never done as far as I'm concerned. You can just keep going and going and going. <laughs> the example is I did a monastery from Bhutan. The first time I did it was 2013. <laughs> And it was like, okay, I have to stop. I can't build. I was like, I think it took about nine, 10 months to do the whole thing. And BrickCon came out. So it was like, I have to stop. And I was not happy with the final result. And so I built a few more months and displayed it 2014. Then I got burned out. So I packed it up. And then I said, okay, I have to start working on it again and improving it. So then I worked on it a few more months and then 2019 was the last time I displayed it. So no, I can keep working on marks. I can keep adding stuff. Wow. You, I mean, I can keep just improving. It's so much fun. That's awesome. Um, you know, it, it, that's a very interesting um, aspect to really any type of art, whether it's with brick or painting or what, whatever, you know, your medium is, it's, yeah. you know, yeah. some people feel that it's finished at some point, but I love that you don't feel it's finished and you can kind of go back and revisit it and grow it into something else or something bigger or like the monastery. I mean, how big did the monastery end up being? I think it is eight feet in length, five feet wide and five feet tall. If you don't mind me asking, how did you even move that? It's built in sections. Of course, of and course. So, um, and I think the 17 boxes, it fit, the whole thing fits in it. The only thing I cannot do is drive a U-Haul. That's way too big for me. So my husband, David, he steps in for that, that one mock. <laughs> that's completely fair. Uh, 17 boxes. That's incredible. I actually yeah. almost expected you to say more. <laughs> no, I learned how to pack it again. Three yeah. times I've opened it and repacked it, uh, putting labels. Like the first time I packed it, there were no labels anywhere. And I packed it and took it home. Or yeah, I took it home. And then when I opened it after a few months to start rebuilding, I, it was like a jigsaw puzzle because there's so many sections and a lot of it is the rock work at the back, the mountain part of it. And like, oh, wait, where, where, what goes where? So, you know, learning curve. <laughs> you start at the corner and you build the border, right? <laughs> Just like a puzzle. Just like a puzzle. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so those little, it's good to know, you know, uh, as you're going back and revisiting these things, uh, you learn tips and tricks like, hey, let's label these things uh, yeah. in the boxes and on the back. Or, you know, some people may not know um, a lot of mocks, especially bigger ones, have a little sticker on the back or the bottom so that the builder yeah. knows where it goes in the whole layout, which yeah. is very helpful. 
It is. And actually, if you see a picture, I've actually posted a picture, I think, of the back of this. And the, when the newspaper came to BrookCon in 2019, they don't have a picture of the model from the front. They only have a picture from the back. Really? With all the sections and labels. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. I think it was the Seattle Times or something. And oh, awesome. that's only the picture they have. And I'm like, wait, what? What is this mark? Why don't you show the front of it? You're like, but look at the front. It's even cooler. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Absolutely amazing mock, of course, by the way. Um, Thank you. I also wanted to mention uh, the Pike Castle that you built. Yeah. F phenomenal. Now that one's Game of Thrones, right? Game of Thrones. Yeah. So when you're looking at inspiration, I think, is that one of your only pop culture? Uh, yeah. Sort of. Yeah, builds? I think so. I think so. That's the only pop culture. So in, in Lego, or when, you be, uh, when you've been to conventions, you see a lot of people will come uh, and say, hey, this is fantastic, but if you had built pop culture, uh, you would have got like best in show or whatever. And I said, no, I don't build pop culture. I, don't, uh, I did grow up here, so I don't understand the pop culture. It took me so many years to understand the difference between Star Wars and Star Trek. It's like, okay, 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 I get it now. And It's so, okay, they're both uh, great. <laughs> They're both great. Uh, so um, it doesn't come naturally to me. But Game of Thrones, I read all the books. And yeah. um, that that was fun. So I could uh, I could do both. I could do landscaping. I could do a little architecture. And I was doing pop culture. It's absolutely, I mean, absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous model. Uh, but I find that interesting that it was actually somebody suggesting that you maybe look in a pop culture direction for some inspiration. And that's that's what you you know, pulled out and it's so incredible and it fits in so well with your style. I love it. Yeah, it, I could do, I could just be myself again and just do what makes me happy. But then I was also pleasing the crowds. Mm. Ah, building for the crowd. <laughs> building for the crowd. <laughs> All right. Well, we, I have to ask uh, before we start to kind of wrap this up uh, in as far as sorting, uh, very simple question. Do you sort by color or do you sort by type of part? Both. Both, ooh, Both. do tell. So, uh, I have big tote boxes or small boxes, depending on how much I, uh, how many bricks I have in that. So it'll be like light gray brick, dark gray brick. But then within that, there's one by two brick, one by one brick, one two by four bricks. Okay, so it's kind of separated inside each. Yeah. Okay, that, that actually yeah. sounds like a very useful system. Yeah. And so I have the color that I want and I have the bricks in separate bags or compartments in the, in the box and I just grab them. Awesome. All right, so this may be a silly question because you actually do amazing huge builds already, but do you have a dream build? Like, like money's not an issue, brick isn't an issue, you can have as much as you want, space isn't an issue, uh, you know, whether it's small, big, hmm. anything. Is there something that you're like, that would be the best, like I really want to build that thing. Uh, it's okay if you don't I have haven't, one. I don't have one. I haven't thought of that. Well, I think I, I kind of expected that from you because I think you already build. When you have an idea, you're like, no, I'm just going to build it. Yeah. And I love that. Well, yeah. Uh, I build it, but then, of course, I need the parts for it. Um, and I get a lot of my parts from the pick brick wall. So mm -hmm. the it's a, it's a double inspiration. It's like, I have these parts. The wall has these parts. I can afford them. I don't have to go to like a secondary uh, store or something like that. And uh, what can I do with this part? Awesome. So sometimes the pieces speak to you and you can kind of go yeah. from there. Yeah. Awesome. Look at you. You get inspiration from everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. So do you uh, kind of ending it up, wrapping it up here, do you have any advice for new builders, especially adults who maybe want to find their way into the Lego community? Uh, I don't think people like advice, but here's what I experienced. Um, build what, ma what makes you happy. Like building for the crowd is of course uh, one thing, but build what calls out to you. The, if you start there, you can improve on it and then you can go, you can climb heights, no worries about that. But get your solid basic building techniques and do that with stuff that makes you happy because otherwise it gets really frustrating. See, I think that's excellent advice. People may not like advice, but I think that's excellent advice, you know. 
get in there and enjoy it first before you try to, you know, go crazy and, and yeah. build something that build something big, build, attention. build, yeah, build. Someone can say, oh no, Star Wars won best in show last year, so I'm going to do something like that and I'm going to build big. And then if if your solids, uh, your techniques are not solid and you don't know what you're doing, that can just be frustrating. Absolutely. Learn to uh, walk before you run, right? Yes. Or learn to walk before you fly. One of those metaphors. One of those things, yeah. <laughs> and then is there anywhere online that people could go to find your work and follow you and all of your building creations? I'm on Flickr. Most of my stuff is on Flickr. Uh, you can just search for Anu Pearson. Uh, I'm on Instagram nowadays, and that's Anu Pearson Build Lego. Great. Yeah, I think that's it. Excellent. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for taking a, a few minutes out of your day to chat with us about Lego. That was wonderful. And uh, I hope wish you the best of luck with whatever you're building now. And hopefully we'll see you at a convention soon. Thank you for having me. It was fun talking to you. Thank you so much.